So, okay, you got to tell me about uh, this new record. This, um, it's called uh, Live at the Academy, New York City, 1995. Yeah. I believe it's like an old recording, a live show with sound, yeah. with your sound check and uh, 32 songs. And, yeah. Like, w what made you guys do that one? Well, 32 songs, I got to tell you, 32 songs, we had to do 32 songs in a show because we played everything so fast. Like you know, like oh my god, we got to do thirty songs, but uh, or whatever. I, um, you know, that recording was done by the late beautiful soul, great innovator in 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 music, Jerry Finn. Oh wow, you and Jerry Finn. Wow, great engineer, great producer. I mean, you know, Green Day, Blink One Eighty Two. He worked with us, and like we, you know, um. He did that live recording and it, we didn't know where the hell it was for years. It was years. all tape, right? Yeah. And like, you know, we recorded. You didn't know it was. You found this shit. We found it. And like, after all these years and then put it together. And Jerry was just like, every time that we got to work with him, he was just such a joy mm -hmm. to be around. And he was just such a great guy. And like, he was a good drummer too. He was, oh, really? he was a good drummer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time I ever saw a guy do triplets on a drum kit. And I, I think I'm from Buffalo. I played with one drummer yeah. my whole life, you know? And then this guy sits down behind a kid. He's like, <laughs> you mean the bottom like, thing? Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> you know, it was pretty amazing. <clears throat> but that was a really amazing time in our career because we still, we were just sort of still, we were struggling to get over that hump, mm -hmm. you know? And we had one song that was just starting to do well. We had a new drummer in the band. Oh, yeah, the, the original drummer was gone. Yeah, he was gone and at that point. Mike, Mike Mullinan, yeah. He played with us for a long time. And um, and we were all still kind of new with each other. Wow. So it was like, so there was, there was, we were still in kind of the honeymoon phase there. Wow. And we were still critics, darlings. Nobody nobody really started shitting on us till after you get, you know how it is. You get some success and everybody starts shitting on oh, you. Oh, dude, the, Whatever. The, some of those English bands, they're great until they become popular. Yeah. And they trash the crap out of them. Like, yeah. what is that? Yeah, I don't know what that is. What do you they want put to you on a pedestal. For the rest of life. Right. And it was like, you know, they hate when people get successful. There's a, there's a certain thing yeah. about that. Now, I you know you, you're like, you know, you, you're a very motivating guy. Like you have this powerful energy that comes off of you. And it's, it's, it's contagious. Your enthusiasm and your, your vibe, is, it's contagious, man. You know, and that's, that's the most important thing. It's like, you got to be able to hang. Oh, totally. And like, you hang. Yeah. You're doing pinky push-ups. Doing pinky push-ups in the front lounge of the bus. <laughs> you, uh, what, did you wake up one night and I was doing push-ups? Yeah, I woke up. I'm like, <laughs> I was famous for that. This you guy do is doing push-ups. Push <laughs> on the bus. On the bus. Driving down the <clears throat> I'm about 80 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man. It's like, keeps this going. Oh, my God. So uh, that album, though, did you have to fix a lot of it? I didn't. I didn't go anywhere near it. We just left it just the way it is, and wow, had it I haven't heard it. I gotta check it out. It's like I, I, you know what? I was like, "Fuck it, it is what it is." Well, that's that's and it's even the vocals. Yeah, everything is just. I didn't touch anything. I did not touch anything. 